Hey everyone, Nubcax here and welcome back to Heroes of the Storm. Today we are playing some Zeratul. Uh, now, as people who have been watching the channel for a long time might know, uh, I'm pretty awful at Zeratul. He's one of my worst heroes, but I thought this would make for a really interesting video because I have been uh, watching, you know, the pros play Zeratul, seeing how do they do it, okay, what it makes it work for them. Um, and then trying to learn that and put it into practice in my own games and seeing how it works out and then kind of walking away each game more and more with a better grasp of how this guy plays. I thought it would be kind of cool because, um, you know, it might give you more of an insight into or see sort of me doing some of the things that you guys are doing because I guess for you guys, a lot of you are watching these videos to learn how to play these different heroes. And it's one of the things I have to do going into every video is being like, okay, well, I know how to play this hero, but now I've got to think about, okay, how do I break it down and explain to someone that doesn't know how to play the hero? How do we even start? And that can be pretty difficult sometimes. So with Zeratul though, kind of coming from someone who knew relatively little really kind of knew how he was played in theory but not how to actually put that into practice uh sorry for body blocking the diablo uh and then trying to to make that work anyway right here unfortunately the medivh shields absolutely beautiful perfect timing saving him from everything unfortunately so double saves thanks to the medivh but i mean that's still some nice damage down on them and they're not gonna be able to heal that up too easily it'll take them a little while and certainly removes a lot of aggression that could happen in that lane and that's fantastic but as you saw right there that's like a big part of how you want to play zeratul i mean the main people i've been watching um were a little bit um in uh, the super league this season i really loved watching reset play so the korean uh, pro gamers uh this dude called reset he's really really good uh, I've also watched a bit of Rich play, and I mean, you see me do it twice here, it's just going in with this very aggressive burst combo, just blink on top of someone in the lane, and hit them with your cleave, hit them with your um, singularity spike, is that what it's called? I don't know what it's called, actually, the W, and then I uh, hit them with some basic attacks, and uh, you do a whole bunch of burst damage, and you're going to want to be roaming around as much as possible, dealing with this, I do believe I get a little bit salty here, I was actually not sure how to lane against the Falstad. Anyway, dodge the hammer. At this point, I was kind of going, wait, do I clear this lane? Do I just sit here for ages? Like, what do I do? Um, at this point, like, we really should have had people roam down. Like, you get a little bit salty and kind of tell people, it's like, yo, someone come and deal with this. It is kind of my fault that I die right here, though. Anyway, I go in to do some damage to the Falstad. Unfortunately, uh, Stitches does arrive. He misses his hook. But at this point, Falstad's hammer comes back off cooldown. I'm dead. Once again, disgusting. The Medivh saves him for the basic attack that would have killed him. Uh, but yeah, I was kind of getting a little bit annoyed. I was like, guys, please rotate. Um, which is what they were doing. If you'd looked at the map, you could have seen um, uh, Diablo was doing that. So he's doing that correctly. But he was rotating up towards top uh, with the Nazebo. Um... But, I mean, we should really, really, really bo be rotating quite a lot. Especially with Jaina. Jaina really opens you up to doing this. Because, again, if she drops her blizzard... Well, hey, that's the whole wave cleared. I mean, you can just press W on the wave, walk away, and you're done, though. <laughs> like, there's nothing more to do. At this point, I was trying to body block the um, the stun from Kael'thas. Unfortunately, he empowered it, so it stunned both me and Jaina. That didn't matter too much. And then just getting a little bit of counter-aggression there onto the Medivh, and there you go. But as you see, it's like a huge part of how you're, I think you're meant to play Zeratul is going kind, like going as aggressive as possible all the time, and then like blinking out, or even blinking on top of people when they've got no uh, position to return damage onto you. And just getting like that nice poke, that nice harassment down, it's very effective. It does get much easier as well at level 13, we pick up a talent. And by the way, we will go over all the talents at the end. There we go, this is pretty nice. We've got Stitches here. Got a blink on top of them, and there you go. Uh, another thing we're going to explore in this video is the idea of body blocking, which would be blinking behind someone who's a bit out of position and finishing them off. But, I mean, you're always, always looking for low health targets. You can see right here, going to throw some damage down the false stat. See Medivh is low. Going to blink on top. Now, he did have a shield, which protects him from half of that. But you still get the idea. We jump in there on top of the low health target, and we take him out. And once again... As you saw, the enemy heroes were really in no position to, to make a counterattack there. I mean, Zeratul does have good wave clear um, when it comes to it. Uh, you know, his cleave plus his basic attacks are really good. He's one of the nicest basic attacks in the game. Um, so you will be able to make use of that. Then worth noting is that you are pretty squishy. Uh, and heroes, you know, do love to focus you down. So you're definitely not going to get much value. Um... You know, trying to do sustained damage in a team fight. That's one of the things. You know, people are asking on my Nova videos, it's like, why play Nova 
when you can play Zeratul. You know, Zeratul does more damage, does more everything. Well, realistically speaking, Zeratul's not going to do more damage. You're more picking him for the utility, for the really powerful ganks, uh, for the really powerful dives, picking off heroes very quickly and efficiently. Like, he's a real assassin of an assassin, if you know what I mean. Uh, whereas Nova will have a bit more kind of sustained and consistent damage just purely because she's ranged. Uh, that is a huge bonus to her. Obviously, as false uh, as um, Zeratul, you're very vulnerable as a melee hero. So your ability to put out consistent damage is kind of low. Really nice play by Diablo down there. You can see me doing a bit of a double take. He actually flipped the stitches over the wall, so that's pretty great. I mean, right there, as you see, like the blizzard kills the whole wave. At that point, you can leave. You don't need to stay there. Anyway, going to stay there, though, myself and finish off the uh, Kel'thas. Body blocking him. So even though I was blinking into terror range, I knew it was worth it because we pick up the kill on him. So that's pretty good. Pretty nice move by Nazebo actually catching him in that zombie wall. So well played. He finishes that off. And we get the second tribute. So nice little lead here in this game for us today. I probably should have run and grabbed that regen glow. Because for the talents I picked up so far, by the way, I picked up regen master at level one. Uh, gives you a bit more health regen. And when you finish the quest with 30 regen globes, I think it is. Uh, you get a nice 500 max health bonus, which is really great on Zeratul. Helps you tank up a lot more. It's a very welcome buff. Uh, at level 4, I picked up Vorpal Blade. You can see this is on my number 1 hotkey. Um, so it will. I can reactivate this to teleport to the last... I think it's hero or unit. I don't know. I think it's unit that I, I travel to. Or that I... Sorry. I can travel to the last unit that I basic attacked in the previous 3 seconds. So whenever I basic attack someone, it puts this little thing over their head. It lasts three seconds. I can press the number one key to teleport to them. Uh, definitely one to pick up here in this game because they have uh, Medivh portals. So I can chase someone through that. Or Falstad, I can chase him. Or Li Ming, I could chase her. Anything like that. You can see it's trying to body block uh, Stitches right here. However, the Medivh does arrive, so I'm going to back out of that. Not going to stay too late. And pick up Void Prison at level 10. At level 7, I picked up Follow Through. And this is definitely going to have a large impact on how you play Zeratul. Um, so it's going to work really nicely with him, but you're basically going to stagger your abilities a little bit so that you get a basic attack in between each uh, cast of your abilities. So, I mean, you'll blink on top of them, hit them, hit them with your Q, hit them again, or hit them with the W, hit them again. I'm not sure if you use the Q or your W first. Unfortunately, the Kel'thas is just out of range, but the, uh, the Jaina does finish him off. The false set does do a chunk of damage to me with his Lightning Rod, but it's not a huge deal. My teammates do finish him off, mostly Jaina with those spells over the wall. There you go, I'm sitting in the, the health regen aura, getting as much back as I can. Your Stitch is going to come in and body block him in. He is now completely stuck. There you go, going to blink over to the other side, body block him in. Unfortunately, the Diablo flip, I believe, right here saves Stitches. So the team screwed it up, unfortunately. We had him dead. He was very screwed. We had him body blocked in. But that's very important to do on Zeratul, though, is to always be looking for um, these... Uh, these body blocking opportunities like can I blink behind them kind of safely and then like wall them in and just be walking in front of them and basic attacking them as you go is a huge part of what you do I'm gonna throw down a VP here just to ensure we survive you probably would have been okay the entire team is very low on mana Diablo is very low on health I think Jaina died top to two of them but I wasn't fully aware of that just kind of a safety VP just ensuring that we're going to be fine uh, also, as you can see, running a bit in front of the Karazine, but giving him someone to dash to at all times so that he's never going to be in too much trouble. Diablo comes in for the counter engage, waiting for the Medivh shield to expire. And there you go, going to blow him up. I should have used my W on someone else. I didn't realize I finished him off with the basic attack, but we'll take it. Diablo does fall as well, but he does have the souls, so it's not too bad, I suppose. Zebo's in a little bit of a tough spot, but I'm going to Hearthstone out, leave him to his fate, and we'll see what happens. Anyway, level 13, we got wow, Wormhole. This is a really nice talent. Um, what this lets you do is... Ah, the Zebo did eventually die. Oh, well. Um, it lets you... Uh, when you blink, it lets you recall to your blink location if you reactivate the blink. I think it's within the next two seconds. It's a pretty short time window. It used to be much longer. Uh, when they removed this is when... Or when they nerfed this is when we saw a big dip in um, his... his uh, his play rate, essentially. Zeratul became much more difficult to play. You'll see me using it well a couple of times, and also screwing it up a couple of times. At this point, I also realized there's a Medivh behind us. Uh, so I was kind of lurking here. I was trying to work out where the portal went to. Our teammates, well played by them, they find out it's there. Jaina interrupts his cooldown until that point. Kel'thas does get some nice damage in, and the Polybomb comes in, but it is not enough to save Medivh. I blink on top of him and blow him up. Happy days. The polybomb did prevent me, obviously, from blinking out and trying to harass the, uh, the uh, Kael'thas, which we might have done otherwise. But here you go. Um, 
I mean, I think that's pretty representative of early Zeratul gameplay, apart from the, the bit where we got stuck in the lane and I screwed it up by getting overly greedy. Um, but I, he works so powerfully and you know, your larger rotations, if you can do that, uh, if your team is rotating more as a group. Admittedly, hard to do on Cursed Hollows, but that can be really effective. Unfortunately, right here, uh, my wave <laughs> got ruined by the, the zombie wall. I was like, dude, why? Why would you do that to me? But it doesn't matter too much. Cleared out anyway. He's sort of aggressively scouting. Gonna get some uh, some damage down for free on the Rhaegar. As you can see, I mean, it's like half his HP in a burst combo. Now, he will be able to heal that up. Whereas I'm relying pretty much primarily on Regen Master. That's okay. Also, looking for a large uh, Void Prison opportunity. We have Diablo with Apocalypse. We have Jaina with the Ring of Frost. So that'd be pretty fantastic. There you can see, diving on top of the false side, Catching with that. Considering a, a VP right there, but it wasn't needed. He goes down, which is pretty good. Gonna use my Vorpal Blades to get back on top of, uh, of Rhaegar right there. And pretty good, we get some nice damage down. Gonna VP the Rhaegar, so Rhaegar should hopefully be out of position. The rest of our team though are... I'm not sure what they were doing actually, didn't catch it on the replay, but the three of them do eventually arrive. They are triple Q together, it's possible that they had some other idea in mind. But they eventually arrive, which is nice. They pick us off. I see the false stat is low, so I'm gonna go in on him. Chase him off. Rhaegar is now low as well. Gonna do some damage to him. I'm gonna up number one, so I move back. Then use my number one, my Vorpal Blade, to teleport after the Flame Strike is gone and get another hit in on the Zert on the Rhaegar. Mixing up all of these names. He does eventually escape. But that's okay, not too bad. So Kerosene wants to do the boss. I see Diablo though is Star of the Bruisers. He doesn't look like he's stopping. So I eventually just blink over and say, okay, I'll help him finish those off. Then we can all go to the boss together as one big happy family. I am low on mana. I've been low on mana for a little while now. So I'm really looking for a Hearthstone opportunity. But I mean, as you can see, like our health is pretty good in a pretty good spot thanks to that regen master talent. So it's actually helping us out quite a bunch and helping us sustain through this. Plus, uh, obviously, the heals from the Kerosene. So it's pretty good. And there we go. Looks like we're going to get a boss. And that's really nice to get the boss this early in the game. And that should hopefully secure this tribute for us as well. I'm just going to lurk here to the side. As you see, doing a nice chunk of damage to the Kalthus. I was hoping to blink over the wall, but actually fluff it up. Uh, but uh, we do escape alive nonetheless, but it can play a little bit better. I think it was, I think if I hadn't blinked though, I would have died right there. So it's just unfortunate it didn't quite pan out. Do spot the false status here, so it's getting a nice burst combo down on him once again. I run out of mana before I can do anything else. I don't want to engage anymore. I mean, if he turned around on me, he probably could have killed me. So that was kind of funny that he didn't. This uh, Medivh is in a rough spot. Gonna blink in front of him. So again, doing the body block thing wasn't super necessary. I think he's dead either way. But still, a nice little thing you can do. Gonna take out this wall as we push in as well, just to give our teammates a bit of an escape. Because this is obviously a little bit of a risky push. We are all kind of low on resources. We are near to the enemy's base. Kelthus overextends right there, coming in for some poke. I have enough mana to blink on top of him, got a couple of spells off, and we burst him down, myself and the Jaina. So that is lovely. And there you go. Gonna back up at this stage. Just letting the teammates know that they should back up as well. And there we go. They're backing up. So that's great. And very nice, nice push right there. So very happy with that. But uh, yeah, so I mean, that was a very quick Void Prison in that last uh, team fight. It was kind of chaotic. Uh, my initial sort of Void Prison opportunity, Jaina actually managed to land a Ring of Frost regardless of that. She kind of, they were so out of position that she was able to land that independently. So at that stage, I obviously didn't cast the Void Prison and ruin her Ring of Frost. Um, and then I was just kind of holding on to it. Maybe could have cast it a little bit earlier. It doesn't matter too much, though. But we did get it down in the Rhaegar in the end. It's just a pity our teammates. I'm not sure, again, what they were doing. But they weren't there, unfortunately. So there wasn't really any follow-up. This stage, Medivh did, unfortunately... Or, Kara seemed to get, unfortunately, caught out by the Stitches Gorge. So that kind of sucks. Uh, Medivh does catch me out with his level 4 talent, I believe, which reveals Stealth of Heroes. Kara seems says, sorry. Now, you're going to notice I'm going to screw this up right now as well. So I'm going to spot Kelthus is on low health. I'm going to go, huh. I might be able to jump in and, like, kill him before he can do anything. And wormhole back out. Unfortunately, as you see, I'm not able to wormhole back out because, dun dun dun, as you saw, like he almost did die, but not able to wormhole back out because I got stunned by Kelthus. So that was something I learned in this game. Don't try to like jump in and aggressively burst someone down in a quote unquote somewhat risky move, assuming you can wormhole out. If the enemy team has a stun, because you're going to get stunned and you're not going to be able to use the wormhole. So I was like, derp. And uh, the even sadder thing is that um, I would have actually been able to kill him. If I'd just gone all in, 
if I'd used my Vorpal Blades, I would have been able to kill him. You probably noticed at the end that when I got ghosted back, I was like, oh shit, maybe I can Vorpal Blades him now. But unfortunately, the uh, duration for that had just run out. So he was able to just kind of laugh from about three foot away as I like feebly struggled towards him and then fell over dead. And he escaped with a sliver of HP, which, uh, um, oh well, hindsight is twenty twenty. I like to say. But uh, definitely an important lesson to learn right here in this game was, yeah, you know, Kalthus, he's got like a 1.5 second stun. That's, uh, it's going to be pretty difficult to wormhole when your wormhole only lasts for two seconds. If he can stun you for most of that, and if you're going to be one to attacking him for the first second, it's going to happen exactly like that. You're going to jump on top of him, spend a second attacking, and then you're going to be stunned. And by the time you come out of the stun, oh dear, your, uh, <laughs> your wormhole thing is going to be gone, and you're going to be stuck there. So lesson learned, sort of. Unfortunately, our teammates are getting picked off one by one. I'm going to throw again a Void Prison in just to make sure the Zeebo gets out. Not the ideal way you want to use Void Prison, obviously, but just want to ensure that he stays alive. It is fairly late into the game. We don't want to make anyone else die. Actually, right-click the wall by accident. I was just trying to start moving, but oh well. Level 16 as well. I picked up Brendan Cleave. This makes your Cleave, your Q, do uh, an extra 50% of its damage uh, over time. So that's kind of nice. I didn't actually notice that Kael'thas was here. So that was a bit of a new move by me. Unfortunately, then the protected thing does keep him alive. So that really sucked. But I was totally not expect. I was completely blindsided actually when he appeared. I was not expecting it. Kind of lucky dodging the stitches hook. Not intended at all. Just doing a nice little friendly spin. Um, and I was like, oh yeah, Stitches has a hook. That has been killing our teammates all game. Oh dear, I probably should have been uh, thinking more about that when I was spinning. But luckily the fact that I was spinning uh, worked out. So guys, lesson of the day is to spin as much as you can. And if the enemy team are here, so I'm just going to blink over the wall. Just clearing out the wave. With random cleaver wave clear is kind of stupid. Our teammates are nearby anyway, so it's not too risky at all. And there you go, we're pushing in for these tributes. It might be the last trippy that does decide the game at this point as well. If one team is able to get all three, it's pretty late in the game, but, you know, it might be over by that stage. There will be bosses to fight over and things like that. But, I mean, uh, yeah, we'll see exactly how it goes. Hook does land down on Karazim. He does pop his seven-sided strike. It doesn't do too much before he gets swallowed up. So that's a bit tough. I think he will die again. Looking for a nice Void Prison opportunity. Got to jump over here, do some nice burst damage. Again, I was thinking about Void Prisoning here, but it uh, wasn't really a great opportunity. Jaina actually does go in fairly deep. Going to get the Void Prison down now. Catching two of them. There we go. Pick up Falstad. In the meantime, Kael'thas is dead. Medivh gets caught out. I'm actually going to use my Vorpal Blades to get over and chase him. Unfortunately, his shield does come in right at the last second to save him from my cleave, but we pick him off nonetheless before the Ancestral can land. So pretty happy about that. But, I mean, that was a pretty damn good uh, team fight on the Zeratul. Maybe if I'd noticed the Jaina rotating around a little bit quicker, I could have landed an earlier uh, Void Prison, and then she could have comboed a, a full person, ring of, uh, full team Ring of Frost in. It would have gone even better. But I think it worked out fairly decently uh, in the end, kind of noticing. Well, the thing I noticed was that our team were kind of backing off on the left. Didn't see Jaina on the right, so that was a bit my bad. But seeing they're backing off on the left, just being a little bit patient, uh, letting Jaina get some damage down, and then catching two in the Void Prison, finishing off Falstad with that time. And uh, yeah, it worked out pretty nicely. Level 20, I picked up Rewind as well. Now my mana at the second is very low, so I'm not going to be able to use it. I'm going to Hearthstone to try to get the mana back to be able to uh, activate that and make use of it. But with Rewind, we're going to have a lot more flexibility, a lot more burst damage. Uh, so we're going to want to be using this pretty aggressively. That's one of the things with Zeratul that I find very difficult. It's like you can't do his like... I suppose the ideal combo is obviously to get off, um, you know, like blink in, hit them. Hit them with your W, hit them with a basic attack, hit them with your Q, hit them with a basic attack, press the rewind, hit them with a W, hit them with a basic attack, hit them with a Q, hit them with a basic attack, and then whatever. It's like a stupidly high burst damage combo. Now, obviously, that takes a long time to do, right? It takes a really long time to do, because that's a lot of basic attacks. Basic attacks take time. That's a lot of spells to cast. Casting spells take time. This is a pretty gnarly fight here, by the way. Definitely overstaying our welcome. Should have blinked over the Falstad. So that was a big mistake for me. I throw in the Void Prison, just try to save myself and Jaina. Unfortunately, I believe my teammates all die, and Jaina starts raging at me, which is kind of amusing. So, I mean, just looking back at the team fight to go over what happened right there, it was very quick, very fast, and furious. But uh, I should have blinked over the false that I was going to. You could see my mouse move, uh, but I was too slow doing it. <laughs> but Jaina starts going absolutely nuts right here. She goes absolutely nuts. She's really annoyed. 
Uh, I don't know why, um, <laughs> really, but uh, she's saying he saved them and killed us, uh, which uh, I thought was kind of funny. So I started off saying, you know, I was going to say, you know, like, I don't think we were going to win a 3v5 in the end. Uh, you know, we were probably, I don't, I hardly think, you know, we were going to walk out, you know, us victorious and the whole enemy team dead. I mean, it's a nice idea, but it wasn't going to happen. Um, but yeah, I mean, when I look back on the replay, because uh, these guys are duo queue, by the way, which is why he's also raging at me. Um, but uh, yeah, <laughs> um, the Void person, it wasn't great, but it was a really hard situation. But watching it back, uh, it was kind of funny the way it worked out. Again, I should have blinked the original thing. But catching the Void Prison, there was like two waves of Blizzard that hit during the Void Prison, so it might have killed the Kel'thas, uh, but our teammates would have died either way. Uh, there was no way they were walking out alive. I was trying to obviously save myself and the Jaina. Uh, it was kind of funny when I watched it back because the Void Prison went down, catching the Diablo, the uh, Kel'thas, and one other person. I forget who now. I think it was Stitches. Um, yeah, it was Stitches. Falstad actually could have killed me, and probably killed me and Jaina. There's a little misstep there as well. You can see I was trying to just run into a little corner, stay in the corner. Should have just stopped moving instead of keep moving. And that makes me lose like all my life, which is actually really dangerous. If the enemy team had been rotating right here, me getting caught by that boss is actually a much larger mistake, in my opinion, than that void prison, which is like a very understandable mistake. Uh, that was a pretty bad one there to actually get hit by the boss, but he's not going to rage at me about that, of course. Um, but yeah, um, it was like, so the void prison goes down, yeah? Uh... There's three of them caught in it. Medivh is on the right fighting Jaina. I'm on the left fighting Falstad. Falstad actually freaks out and goes into the Void Prison himself going, Oh shit, it's, it's a Zeratul and a Jaina. I'm so dead right here because of this Void Prison. And he goes into it to hide. Uh, then Jaina, unfortunately, so actually she made a mistake as well, which I thought was very funny, is that she goes in uh, to the Void Prison too when it was just a Medivh left, uh, left outside. So she could have escaped alive as well. I could have cleared up that wave with my Q. But yeah, looking for a Void uh, VP here. I actually catch four of them. I was hoping for all five. I was kind of hoping we might get an APOC to follow up on this Diablo thing. And then maybe Jaina to rotate down with Ring of Frost and pick him off. Uh, they decide not to, but they're just going for core. So that's fine as well. I mean, they could have mixed in uh, the APOC and the VP any, uh, into the VP anyway. But uh, it doesn't matter too much because uh, we got the victory. But ideally, you know, you'd be looking for that would be an ideal Wombo combo situation four heroes in it. Unfortunately now, Rhaegar wasn't, who'd be the ideal target I suppose to catch in there, but it's still pretty decent, all the same. Uh, and we'd have a big AoE wombo, so, you know, it would've been pretty brutal. Could've gone in with the Rewind uh, and the Cleaves and done a whole ton of damage. There's the stats, we'll come back to them, and here's the talents. Regen Master of Vorpal Blade, follow through. So Vorpal Blade, again, just showing that. Void Prison, Wormhole, Rending Cleave, and Rewind. It's your, pretty much your standard Zero Tool type build. As you can see, looking at the stats, uh, one second, I need to get them back because my, I closed my video by accident. Oops, here we go. Bear with me. And there you go. Uh, come on, stats. One second. There we go. Okay, so I'm back on the stats myself. Um, so we didn't die too much. You know, we actually probably overly soaked XP, I would probably say. Um, we did some pretty decent damage overall. Uh, actually, our Karasim as well did fantastic damage, so that's kind of nice, and that's pretty cool. Well played by him. That was getting a lot of value off that seven-sided strike. A nice choice of heroic, I would say. Which, yeah, it was pretty cool. I was hoping in the game when I went in to record it that we'd get more Wombos with the Void Prison because we did have the Jaina and the Diablo picked up uh, to go with the Void Prison. That would have been really cool to show you guys because it's such a powerful little combo, but uh, we didn't ever manage to pull one of those off. But nonetheless... I think it was still a pretty uh, representative game of how to play Zeratul. I mean, certainly some of the things that I've learned from playing him is like just going in for those like aggressive uh, attacks in the lane and just like playing him really aggressive and just being confident that you are a very powerful early game hero and that certainly against most heroes. And you'll get to know this as you play him more and more, I suppose. But you get the feeling of what heroes you can like out trade and then going in and taking those aggressive trades and just being a bit of a bully early game, being something scary to go up against. Then the team fights, obviously looking for low health targets to jump in and pick off. Uh, he is difficult to play in team fights, especially because he is this sort of like jumpy in, jump out again, melee assassin, which is a difficult style to play to be sure. But it's like, yeah, as you saw, okay, you see it out a low health target, try pick him off. 
when you see a, a bunch of the enemies clumped up, you probably want to try catch them in your Void Prison. At least either to take them out of the fight for a few seconds and then let your teammates hopefully win what should be like a 5v2 remaining or something like that. Something along those lines, you know what I mean? Um, or setting them up for uh, some sort of wombo combo. Um, and yeah, it can, be, it can be extremely effective. He could be such a great hero, but he's certainly one that I'm going to be playing more and more myself because uh, I was pretty happy with this game. But I felt like I could, there's still like little things that I could improve on for sure. Little things I could improve on. Uh, I felt the biggest thing for me was like going down into that lane against the Falstad. I felt I really didn't play that very well. I was like, huh, okay. So I felt like I was, I'm pretty good at the rotating stuff now. But it's like when it came to the actual, okay, I need to lane at this stage. Uh, I kind of felt like oh, I didn't actually have any experience. So I was kind of hesitating and not quite sure which way I should deal it. Like, should I go aggressive or should I just be really, really patient or what should I do? Um, so that was the one thing that I walked away from this going, I should learn. Uh, regarding, again, the sort of flaming from the Jaina at the end, uh, there's no point in, like, arguing with people who flame. I think, you know, just, you know, just troll them and ignore them because it's the internet and, well, just generally, I mean, to get a bit deep, like, people, you know, it's not like if I gone, like, well, you know, it was a, it was a 3v5, I don't think we would have won, really. Uh, I was just trying to save as many of us as I could from a really horrible situation, you know, I think it's highly unlikely that he would have turned around and go, oh yeah, actually, no, that's kind of fair. You know, you didn't place it that well, but you know what? It's okay. I could understand like the situation was really hectic and, you know, it's very much a forced error when you're under that much stress and have to make a really quick decision. It's okay. And, you know, I made a bit of a mistake walking to the VP2, but uh, you know what? Live and learn, right? We'll improve for the next fight. It's highly unlikely that he would have said something like that. And then, you know, that I if, you know, would imagine anyone would turn around and go, oh yeah, thanks, Jane. I like really appreciate that. And yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, people aren't going to be that friendly. Uh, more than likely, if I'd said, like, well, I don't think we would have won that fight, and we'd like, OMG, noob, like, shut the fuck up, ignore it, or something. Um, it's the internet, right? So people don't, they're not gonna, they're not interested in hearing what you have to say. They just want to, for the most part, insult you and be right themselves. So in 99% of things, this goes for YouTube comments, this goes for everything, right? It's when, you know, when people are having a big argument, it's like, Neither one really wants to hear what the other has to say. They just want to prove they're right. So I personally, I try to steer clear of them as much as I can because um, I don't think there's much point because there's no actual debate going on. And it's the same, really, in uh, life and society. Politics, right? Politics. It's all about that. It's all about arguing your side and no interest in what the other one is saying. Uh, yeah, pretty much everywhere you see that sort of thing, unfortunately. I think I only sort of learned the skill of actually... A properly engaging with someone in a discussion and like relationships and stuff it's like the only place in life maybe with family as well a little bit where you actually learn to you know talk with someone and come at it from like with very strong feelings on both sides like both thinking the other person is really wrong but still sitting down and being able to talk about it and being willing to actually genuinely listen hmm. anyway that's deep but a bit of philosophy but a deep thought thrown into the end of this heroes of storm video why not mix it up a little bit <laughs> put a bit of a spin on things there you go, guys, though. Give a like if you liked it. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you next time for more Heroes of the Storm. We should, like, throw a little philosophy segment in at the end of every every episode. Maybe be like a Zeratul thing. Every Zeratul video, we've got some words of wisdom. Kind of fits in with Zeratul. He's a pretty wise He's a pretty wise dude. Nice prophet and all that. Anyway, I'll see you all next time, guys. Bye-bye.